Underdog Fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy sports and their pick'em game. Sign up now with Code Poodle to claim your special pick plus a first time deposit offer up to $250 in bonus cash. Hey what's going on everybody it's Poodle back with another college football 25 video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you all the best dynasty building tips to ensure your dynasty is built for today, tomorrow, and well beyond that. Before we get into the video give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, comment down below if you have any questions, and of course if you haven't check out Underdog down below. Using my link helps out the channel a lot, get your first deposit match up to $250 and there's daily specials for new users all the time. So the first thing you want to be looking at in CFB 25, I think right off rip when you join, is check your team's deal breakers. I'm gonna drop the face cam for this portion so you guys can see. Checking your team's deal breakers is simple. Go to your roster and then hit the right stick to the right and or left depending on where you're at. But you see the deal breaker right here. For instance, Will Campbell has playing time A minus, needs B minus. This will not be a hard one to hit, but the reason it's important to check is because I've had this issue and seen a lot of people have this issue. Once you get to a point where you've broken these deal breakers on some players accidentally, they will want to transfer out. And if they get to a point where they really want to transfer, you really have no chance of persuading them to stay. It is so important to check these out. One example of this is Emery Jones, my superstar right tackle on LSU. He has a deal breaker for playing style. We have a B plus in his and he needs a B minus, which means we're already on the cusp. Now, he's a power tendency guy, which means power running, power plays. That's what he wants to see. LSU is a spread, let the ball fly, wide receiver type program, right? So when I play with LSU, first two seasons, I just throw the ball. Almost every sim I've done, Emory Jones has requested a transfer. Some have been a high level request, low and almost impossible. Like you have to see how hard it is to retain this guy. I pretty much had to run the ball a like 30, 70 split, 40, 70, 40, 60 split to do it. And even doing that, he still had a pretty decent chance of transferring. So definitely check this out because nothing, nothing could kill morale more than having like a guy like Harold Perkins or Jones or Campbell transfer after one year and just being like, wow, I blew it. Like I let this guy at the transfer portal. So make sure you're checking your deal breakers on all your players. That's my first tip for building your dynasty. Always check your deal breakers start of the season and make sure you're meeting them. If you have two QBs that have playing time, you got to pick which one's starting and just deal with it. The next guy's going to go, but always be checking that. Sometimes you may think, oh, I, I lock. it's not Madden, right? You can't just lock up a 90 overall guy, sign him to a contract and call it quits. So make sure you are looking through all your deal breakers. Some players may not have anything too specific. For instance, right here, these guys playing time, they're not starting. That's a problem. Do I care about them? Not so much. They're seniors. It is what it is. But if they're freshmen or sophomores and you want to retain them, make sure you're looking at this. Next thing you want to do is go over to recruiting and go over to my school. I believe every season you should take a firm look at this. Look at where you stand from the start of the season and see where you can make improvements. Of course, as LSU, there's not many. As a lower program, there's plenty. There's some that you can't change at all. For instance, program tradition and championship contender can be met, can be altered by the user, right? By just playing. Proximity to home cannot be touched, etc. Campus lifestyle cannot be touched. Point being here is look at this every season. This is how you grow your team prestige. As LSU, I'm never gonna get the academic prestige up, right? That is something that can't be altered. However, coach stability can be altered. Take a look through all these and see what you can improve. Improving these will bring your stars up. Bringing your stars up will help your recruiting. Bringing your stars down will make your recruiting worse. So for instance, right here, pro potential, A+. Currently, we had five fourth, seventh round picks. We had a second round pick. This is why we're an A+. Plus. If this year we try to play very well-rounded, we don't get a lot of stats, we kind of hurt some of our recruits in that sense, and we don't push anyone to the NFL, this could drop to a B+. Plus. That will greatly hinder my ability to recruit next year. So this is the long game. And it also hurts your in the current year. Obviously, if you may, if the damage is done towards the end and you're already committed them, you're kind of okay. Although if you do break a deal breaker, they can uncommit or decommit, I should say. But definitely keep keep in mind because this will play the long game. If you hurt these things in year one, the next year or two, you may have to work to bring them back. So just make sure you're checking to see where you can improve. If you're a lower one star, two star, three star program, these will be much lower, a lot more room for improvement. And on the flip side, as a four and a half, four, five star program, you want to be checking to make sure you don't kill these things. Being a championship contender and then missing missing the playoffs year one with a top five to four star program will greatly bring this down. Losing week to week will bring this down program, tradition, etc. Make sure you're keeping an eye and tab on what you have here and seeing what you can impact as a user. Next thing you want to be doing is always going to your roster. This should be the third thing you do right off rip before you even get into recruiting. Go to your roster, look at what you have and take a look at everyone's dev traits and year classification. So let's start with the quarterback one, for instance, right? Let's say all things considered, we look at it. Nussmeyer is a junior, a redshirt junior. He still has some time to play. We don't have to freak out about needing another one, but we are going to want to recruit a top guy because he's not a 90 plus overall. He's not a, he's not a, franchise QB per se, right? He's not a guy that's going to be game breaking, but he, he is solid. So take a look at who you have. 
What I would do first is check out your freshman. We have Ricky Collins, who's a redshirt freshman, and Colin Hurley, who's a true. I would focus on true freshmen when looking at this, and this is when looking at who you're gonna redshirt versus who you're gonna build for the future. So click on Colin Hurley. What you wanna do is check out all your players' development traits, because that will show you whether or not they're worth redshirting and building, or whether or not just let them play, right? So for me, if it's a normal dev player, I'm probably not redshirting them. I'm just going to have them as a backup to come in, fill, fill the role when they're needed, wear and tear type guy, come in, take the load off. But the redshirt guys or the freshman guys that I want to keep will be impact star, technically elite, although elite, I'm probably not redshirting. I'm starting. So that's what you want to check. So just to wrap it up, if they're normal, I'm probably leaving them into play. They're not going to build that much, right? If they're impact or star, I'm greatly considering redshirting them although i'm making a video going over how to and when to redshirt so definitely watch that but to break it down in quick in quick terms if they're close to the start and overall and they have an impact or above i'm probably starting them if they're far behind i'm definitely trying to build them and keeping them back there as a red shirt so definitely go through and check out all your players i'll give you a prime example of this right so if you go into my running back uh, duo here right my two guys i have williams and caleb jackson ahead of the depth chart now, although i may want to start these guys if you take a look at caleb durham down here as a freshman he has star development trait he has insane stats. This is the kind of guy that you want to make a quick decision on. Do you redshirt him or do you start him? If you start him and have a great season, he'll develop a lot. If you redshirt him as a star, he's still going to get some great development and get some more. But you do want to always take a check out of these things because if you play a guy for like three games and then decide, I'm going to go with the starter here, for instance, like a wide receiver. You play one of these freshmen like Samson or Watkins who are really good with good dev for like two, three to four games. And then like, no, I need Lacey back in for the push. You already killed their redshirt eligibility. So make sure you make these decisions week one take a look at their dev trait take a look at if they're worth building what do they have and from there you can go ahead and decide what's the next best step because this is going to hurt you in the long run if you don't properly allocate your freshmen right off the rip know what you're doing with them know if you're building them if you're trying to get stats with them or know if you're going ahead and just trying to redshirt them now before we get into recruiting there is one last thing you want to go into your coach abilities if it's a custom coach i would go check out the recruiting class first if it's a current coach i will go check out what you have so i would go right to recruiter and take a look so for my coach i have advanced look at qbs so i have a little leg up on qbs i have defensive line packages i have linebackers i have secondary i have kickers and then down here i have dbs linebackers again and d-line right so these are going to boost on top of each other with the extra stuff for getting recruits now what i don't have running backs wide receivers offensive line so when looking here you might say in year one i have no points you're going to start your scouting and recruiting right off the rip preseason week one Keep in mind, while you can build up some other packages, you're going to have to get XP. So especially when you're first starting, look at what you have and try to maximize that. With that being said, I'm probably looking at QBs year one, uh, D-line, linebackers, DBs. It would be very controversial in my opinion and, and not the best way to be efficient with what you're doing. If you go running backs, wide receivers, and O-line as your premier focus year one, because other guys are going to have those packages and have legs up on you. And you might be in a losing battle where you're inefficiently going for players you don't have packages for. So I would definitely take a look at what you have and see where you can build on that. And then in terms of that, also as the season progresses, make sure if you have two quarterbacks on the board, a bunch of D-line, make sure you're actually going ahead and finishing some of these uh, packages up, to get incre increasing them. Or if you do really want a wide receiver, make sure your first package you buy is for these things, right? This is scouting obviously, but recruiting actions give a bonus, increase weekly hours for them. These are all things you don't wanna be doing. So my point is make sure you're matching your coaching packages with your actions in recruiting. That's gonna go a long way. Being inefficient and doing the opposite of what you have won't help you. And it's gonna honestly hurt you because other people will be taking this method. Now with all that being done, it's time to look at your recruit list and I cannot trust this enough. Do not spend a single hour until you thoroughly look through the recruit list. I've seen a lot of people say, oh man, I ran out of hours. Yeah, like if you're a one, two, three star program, we don't have a lot of hours. Do not waste them. Even as a top program, you wanna efficiently use them. The first thing I do is you wanna set a board. Do not do not look at this guy like, oh, right here, this guy's a five star, he's in my pipeline, I want him, I'm gonna offer the scholarship, do not. Also, calculate the scholarship amounts. I'm gonna get out my calculator, this is what I do every time. Keep in mind that if you wanna offer, look at how much you wanna offer. If I wanna offer 35, 35 times five is 175. So make sure you do not drop below 175 at bare minimum. So what I like to do is I calculate the 175 number and I save that. I do not go below those hours so I can offer a full 35 class. Now let's say you finish up your board and you really only have like 12 guys you like, there you go. That extra you save from the 175, you can now use to scout and do other things. Let's say you have the full 35, great, you kept it. If it's 32, you wanna save some for transfer portal stuff, stuff, that's fine. But make sure you do not go below that. I know a lot of people who scouted crazy and they got to the end and they could only offer seven scholarships. They messed up their entire class, they're a five-star program, 
do not do that. Week one is so important. So make sure that you are going through and making sure you save that amount of hours. Secondly, be careful with scouting. So I've done this too before in some test runs. You look at a quarterback, you go in, you're like, yeah, I'll take these right here. And then instantly you're like, yeah, okay, let me see what, let me, let me see what they're looking like. You scout them, you go through, scout a bunch, you keep going, right? You scout seven to eight quarterbacks. You're like, okay, cool. That guy's a gem. I like this one. I'm going to keep these three on my board. You've just wasted, especially as a lower program, a ton of points. So now when you go through and you finally make it through all the way down to like defensive ends and offensive, uh, offensive tackle area over here, you're out of half your points already. You're less than half. You're not going to make it to the second half. You're not going to be able to scout cornerbacks. Now you're throwing out blind scholarships at the end there or running out of points. So make sure my best advice is to set your board first then do this as well. I like to calculate, calculate how many points it costs to scout players, divide that by how many hours you have, see how much scouts scouting attempts you even have. So let's say you subtract the 175 from 1,125, whatever you have remaining, then divide that by 10. That's how many scout button clicks you have. Keep that in mind, because if you only scout QBs, halfbacks, wide receivers, you scout like 20 of them each, you're going to be out of hours and not be able to scout anything else. Then you got to throw blind scholarships. By the time you actually have enough points to scout them and see what they were and their red gems, it's too late. People already have their recruiting packages out. People have their recruiting offers out. Everything is good to go and now you're behind. You do not want to do that. Look at everything from a holistic standpoint. See what you need. I like to go through recommended, add a bunch of what I need, make sure I, I assess that first. And then I go through and scout the ones I really need to know, like quarterback, I need to know. But I like to break it down to like three or four. Don't do 10. Trust me, that is going to hurt you. So my best advice is look at everything from a holistic standpoint, get a notepad out, like I keep saying, and look at it very carefully. Another thing to keep in mind is your scholarship amounts. Like I said before, I briefly touched on it. If you go and offer all 35, obviously you're not gonna get all 35 people, so it's not the end of the world. But as you go through the season, make sure you don't sign 35 people, unless you have an insane class and you have to go forward with it, but do not sign 35. I like to save at least three scholarships for the transfer portal even four or five and there's a reason for this now some people think it's just for the elite players now honestly the transfer portal sometimes you'll get a you'll get a five star you might even get three but you don't always get the most insane guys and honestly the entire world is fighting for that five star right so it's not the easiest thing to get them either i save a few to round out my roster because transfer portal is kind of like free agency when you see what your class looks like you'll be like oh i got a quarterback i got a wide receiver i got a d-line oh my god i forgot about cornerbacks i only have three on the roster a senior's leaving i'm gonna have to get walk-ons let me utilize my four to just bring in three straight three and four star corners. Screw it, right? Like that's what you need to be worrying about. Save some because that's kind of like giving you some freedom and free agency. You do not want to give out all 35 and then end up with like five walk on corners, a walk on kicker. That's the time to uh, kind of like round out your roster. So save a few. And honestly, you can even save more than that. It really depends on how you want to do your team. If you want to just get the best talent in recruiting, do not worry about your depth chart. Maybe you recruit 20 guys and you leave 15 for the transfer portal and try to go through. Remember, that's going to be tough though because you do have hours to work with and there's some things to do there. So I wouldn't do 15, but again, it's all about your roster. It's all about your prestige and kind of what you can and can't do, but definitely be saving some for the transfer portal. Last but not least, guys, make sure you're monitoring your recruit list every single week. Every week it's changing. My best advice is know when to call it quits. If you see right now, right, I'm number four here. I'm number one here. If I'm number one this with this kind of lead and I stay ahead, take that, get them, win, win, win the bid, right? But I'm at number four. If I do the, if I go through the scholarship process and next week, Ohio State, Texas, and USC get a huge lead on me and I'm really far behind, the odds of you catching back up are so low, especially when they're near the end, just drop out of the race. You're wasting hours. And the problem with wasting hours is, yeah, okay, you're gonna fight for seven quarterbacks and you're not gonna get them because you're behind and you tried to fight to the end. Now, instead, you could have been getting the corners and the safeties and other people that were being undervalued or underappreciated because these were being done. And by the time you switch back to them, people may have caught on and realized that already. So definitely no one to drop. My second best advice is get ready for the mid-season flip, as I call it. The mid-season flip is when you already get your recruiting hours back because guys have committed, they've committed elsewhere, or you've given up, at which point your hours, the first few weeks are kind of locked up. By the mid-season flip, it's like you have half your hours back or a quarter or a third of your hours back. That's when it's time to go through and get some sneak gems. That's when I like to go through and look at three, four star guys that weren't really recruited, even some two stars who are green gems and try to just finesse some three star, four star green gem guys you can get for cheap because no one recruited them because everyone's so focused on fighting for five stars and four stars. You got your guys, right? You know which ones you have the lead on. When you get that flip and you get all those points back, make sure you go through and also make sure to properly allocate. For instance, there's been some guys, let's say like a, a middle linebacker that was third on my list that I wanted, right? And if you go through, then you might see like a middle linebacker that you haven't given a, you haven't given an offer to yet, but no one else has either like Sean Fine right here. No one's given an offer. You can easily sneak in and take this guy 
and you want to scout him right you have some points now you can go and scout you can go and check these guys back out also you may already have been on this guy and you were only giving him maybe like a 10 a dm player uh may maybe like five points you were keeping it very low because you didn't have enough points now you have to go reallocate so that's the next thing is make sure you go through your recruiting board after you start to get these points back and see where you may have only been throwing a 10 or a five at a guy because you were ahead or you weren't really sure if you wanted them now it's time to go back and finish off those guys now go throw your points at them make sure you're allocating them properly and make sure to see this guy gets 60 points i've seen some people only through the set in the house on 50 not realizing they had the extra 10 from coaching packages so that's important too but guys that pretty much wraps up my best tips for building a dynasty of course more things may come to mind as the years go on as the seasons go on and I will make more videos with more tips and everything else. But if you have any other tips, comment them down below so everyone else can see them and they can get some help from this. If you have, if you like the video, like give the video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and of course, check out Underdog. Thank you guys for watching. I'm out. Peace.